Hello everyone, Wolfie here back with another hero deep dive video where I take a hero from Gigantic and tell you exactly what all of their upgrades do in their ability trees, every single last one of them. We go over what the upgrades do, what they don't do as opposed to the tooltip might indicate, and just kind of give you at the end of the video two builds uh, for the hero in question. This time we have Charnock, our big, lovable, burny dragon boy. It's been a little while since I made one of these deep dives because I've been really focusing on getting the basic videos out and then I took a little vacation, but we're back. So uh, before I really get into it, though, I want to remind everybody that Charnock as a caster, a lot of his abilities are really high impact, big area of effect damage and kind of these long cooldowns that uh, that just do these big effects so you want to use them carefully and a lot of his upgrades actually enhance the capabilities of of slightly just giving extra benefits that kind of add more to the fact that you want to use them properly you don't want to just spam every single ability uh because each one of these each one of these like right mouse button q and e's that charnock is going to cast uh when you get further and further into your upgrade path you realize that they actually have huge impact and you want to use them for very specific purposes let's jump right into it though starting with the left mouse button as always we're going to go to the left first it's called big ball of fire gain a third charge level so the third charge level will do more damage and it increases the radius slightly so you may remember on the on the initial uh, basics video for charnock the fireball only has two charges it just has the basic quick attack and then that second bar fills and then the fireball will launch further, faster, and do more damage in a bigger space. This is the exact same thing, it's just now that there's three charges. So you still start at the same initial charge point, but now you have two bars that fill. And the third bar takes a little bit longer, it feels like, in my opinion, but not too much longer. But you'll see, you get that third wind up, and Charnock has like big glows, his hand is all the way back, and then he unleashes the fireball it's a huge fireball. It explodes big damage. And that's that's really about it. I mean, there's a there's a bit of downside to the fact that you can't fire as often, but it's just more bursts of damage because it's 360 pre mitigation, which is a pretty hefty chunk of damage. Uh, but moving on to the tier twos uh, on the left here, left, left. Uh, on full charge increases the area size. Now, for some reason, it kind of looks like it overwrites the second charge. It's actually supposed to be the third charge. The second charge will stay the same of doing 225 and a 1.4. It's supposed to be uh, the third charge increases from 1.8 to 2.3. That is all this upgrade does. It doesn't increase the damage. It just is the size of the explosion. And you'll note when, you know, I land that full explosion, it's pretty big. Like that, that covers a very wide area. And since it's a wider space, that also means you are given a little more leeway if you don't hit directly. Because the, the damage will still fall off if they're further away from the center of the explosion. But you're you're given a lot more um, you're, you're given a lot more freedom in terms of who will, will get damaged and why. Because even even at like, well, that was a little too far. Even from there, it's still doing 221. And then the direct hits do 306. So like you're you're losing 80 damage per shot from that distance, and that you know they're it's going to fluctuate up and down a bit depending on where exactly they are when it explodes. But uh, that is the basic of it. And then finally on the right side we have bombastic. Uh, on a full charge, which means all the way up to tier three, you gain four percent increased basic attack damage until your next attack misses, and this will stack up to three times, which means it is a maximum of 12 percent increased damage so if i do this and hit you see i get a damage boost and that damage boost is permanent until you miss it, it's it's important to know that it's permanent and that's that's the full stack so now these shots are doing 342 but now if i actually miss this sh this should in theory do oh, actually no it doesn't say direct hits so this is uh this is good to know so long as someone is actually getting damage, you're technically keeping the stack. And I believe the damage would stay even if you don't do a full charge. I'm going to actually test that right now. So 
Set tier two did 214. Tier one does 133. I'm going to miss a shot on purpose to lose the damage buff. That does 119. And that did 191. So it does also count for the tier ones and twos. And so long, so long as you did three full charge shots and hit somebody, you're getting the damage boost. So it's it's a pretty nice little extra uh, buffer. It's a uh, it's it's honestly, I mean, I don't know. I I I don't really like the tier three because I think it takes too long to actually charge up and and fire, and you're kind of losing potential damage. But, you know, if if you're in a if you're in a comp team of, of a bunch of, you know, burst damage dealers like another mage or or um, or like Amani or, you know, trip, then kind of collectively bashing everybody with three different sources is probably going to eliminate someone right away. Uh, but I don't think this is I don't think the left tree is really super great, in my honest opinion. But by all means, you can give it a try. And if it works for you, then, of course, do it. Now we're going to go to the right mount, uh, the right side tree of the LMB, starting with burn notice on direct hits, apply a burn. And this is only on, on the second charge on full charge, direct hits, apply a burn. The burn does 40 damage per second for three seconds. So tier ones, no burning tier two, though, burning. And that's that's basically it. That's the that's the very short version. It's a very simple um, it's a very simple upgrade to understand. And it's just a, a pretty big damage boost. You can constantly refresh the burning because the source of the burn is from your charged LMBs. It just, it's so, it's so good. Um, I do believe, yes, it does have to be a direct hit. So you're, uh, you're definitely more rewarded for landing your shots. Otherwise, you're not actually getting the benefit of this upgrade. But these... The fireballs are pretty forgiving. Just remember that they actually have a projectile. They are not hit scan. Um, so you do need to aim slightly ahead of where your target is going. And with a game with a lot of mobility, there, of course, is a learning curve to that. So, you know, uh, the, it's probably the best upgrade out of the out of the left mouse button upgrades. Uh, but get it at your own risk. Uh, then we're going to go to tier twos. On the left side, we have extended notice which increases the dur uh, the burn duration from three seconds to five seconds. So, well, actually, let me real quick retract that. I land the burn. Three ticks of burn. And then if I do this, burn lasts a lot longer. So, yeah, it's it's pretty simple to understand. It's a uh, it's just a it's more damage more often. And, you know, you can use this to have burning going on on one target and then switch to another target and then they're also burning. And then you just switch back and the burning stays because it lasts for five seconds, lasts forever. It's a pretty good upgrade. Uh, but I think the better upgrade here is Stoke the Fire. Um, on hit, you're dealing 45 extra damage to enemies that are burning. And this could be on both Tier 1s and Tier 2s. It, it does not matter which one. Uh, so... And since this, since this is the tier two of the one that applies burning, you're basically giving yourself a flat 45 damage increase just for landing a couple shots. And then you can, you know, charge up, fire three more mini ones, or you can just do constantly like big ones because you're, you're going to be applying burning no matter what. I mean, you do have to, you do have to do intervals of, of if you do the little ones and then the big ones. Or sorry, if you do the big one and then the little ones, like you do eventually have to do another big one because they're going to stop burning. But you're you're getting that damage bonus either way. And I think this is actually a much bigger damage uh, per second increase. So that's kind of that's kind of the little nuance of the of the LMB with uh, that specific upgrade path. Now let's go to the right mouse button upgrades again, starting with the left. Turning up the heat is the tier one on the left here. Increases Dragon Beth's duration from three seconds to four seconds. So. Just one extra second of uh, applying that really rapid ticking damage, 35 per tick of damage, which I think results in about four, maybe five more hits over the course of it. And you'll see as well, uh, because because the ability lasts longer, it also increases the cooldown of the ability if you do the full duration. Because remember, the uh, the cooldown of Dragon's Breath increases the longer you hold it. Because it starts at eight seconds, and then if you hold it maybe just halfway through, 
11 and then now it caps out at 15 because you have that whole extra second to accommodate for the cooldown so there is a there is a bit of a cost to uh, getting it but it, it is a it is a general damage increase uh if you can get the full thing off like by all means but four seconds is a very long time to uh, interrupt so keep that in mind uh, and then we have on the left tier two, Scorching Flames. On hit, attack duration buffs damage up to 30%. Now, what I think this means, and I'm 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 pretty confident in this because I've I've tried doing little tests here and there off camera. I'm thinking that what this means is that over the course of the of the breath, the damage caps up. Like each additional damage tick does 30% more damage. And it it might be slow ramping intervals of maybe five every couple ticks. So overall, this is actually not a huge damage increase because of the fact that it's only doing 35 damage anyway. And 30% extra damage from 35 is like, what, 12 damage? And that's only on the tail end, like the last five or so, you know, ticks of damage an extra 12 damage which it it does add up of course but not a super great damage increase like let me let me real quick get take that back so that full duration did 804 and we're gonna wait a couple seconds here to get the ability back but i'm gonna pick up scorching flames but remember 804 was that initial damage and then it ramps up starting at 0% increased damage, then all the way up to 30%. You know, it's it's a scaling increase. But now, that full duration did... That's weird. It should have done more. Did it do more? No, it didn't do more. So, I mean, apparently it doesn't even work. So, so that's, that's interesting. I'll try one more time. I think maybe something went wrong. So this one... Yeah, 804... And then this is a this is gonna be a long section of the video where I'm just ranting as I'm waiting for cooldowns. On hit, attack duration buffs damage. So yeah, it, it should just increase the damage over the course. And I I could have sworn I did this and it increased the damage. That is super weird. Apparently this upgrade doesn't even work. So <laughs> now now you know that upgrade it doesn't even work. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go to the other side now. Backburner on backstab hit uh, hit deals armor ignoring damage. So normally, you know, again the, the 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 way that armor works in the game is that it's a flat damage reduction. It's a one for one damage reduction. So lightly armored foes like Nasus have fifteen armor in the front and then much less in the back. But basically, if you uh, if you if you're burning if your dragon breath ticks are ticking in the back, it's going to completely ignore armor, which is essentially dealing true damage. So I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to go behind him. It did 804 or 807, whatever, whichever one it was. And then now, 912. So, like, that's that's significant difference. But also, you have to remember that you have to hit in the back for it to count. So, you know, when, when you're reducing a 35 damage tick by only 15%, and then now it's doing full damage, that's not super impactful i i think the i think the other side of of the dragon breath tree is way better speaking of the other side of that tree uh tier one on the right side now is called fire shelter gains frontal deflection and frontal damage reduction while using dragon's breath it's th this is such a huge improvement to the ability like this is probably one of the best single uh talent uh, sorry single upgrade dips like in the game because this is this just it's a total game changer for Charnock because he doesn't actually have any defensive capabilities and then having 20% reduced damage from the front and also deflecting everything that comes his way over a three second channel, which lasts pretty long and it can be interrupted. It's it's not impossible to interrupt, but this is just it's so nice. And, you know, it fronts creates that creates that cool fire shield and the damage doesn't get reduced like it, it still does the same amount of damage. You could still use it for the full damage potential but giving yourself that defensive capability i it's i i cannot overstate how good fire shelter is general genuinely um but anyway to the tier twos now uh roughly about the same just minor uh improvements 
Uh, the fireball increases the damage reduction to 40% instead of 20%. So I don't necessarily need to pick this to show it because it doesn't really have any... It, it doesn't have any noticeable uh, kind of uh, difference. You, that's more something that would happen like when you see it in-game. Uh, but then the other one, Backdraft, on release pushes enemies away. Uh, and again, another another situation where a push is identified as an interrupt, and it's not. I, I've said that plenty enough in other videos, so you guys know the drill. Um, but you hold it down, and at the end of the cast, you just release a wave. And the wave, I think, on its own does a little bit of damage too, uh, and then pushes them away. And you don't have to do the full channel. It's just like... I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can just hit it very briefly and then it'll push like no matter what you're going to push. And it also like <laughs> a really cool animation particle effect of, of the smoke pushing them away. Now we're going to go over to the Q detonate upgrade starting on the left called blast off increases the initial damage from 200 to 300. So a, a flat 100 damage bonus. So you'll see if I kind of run over here. 170 after mitigation, of course. And then I'm going to pick up Blast Off. And then you'll see as I kind of get back on cooldown. Remember that Blast hit 170 post mitigation. And then this one, 280. So, you know, just just a little extra burst damage. It's not, it's not really that great on its own. I think the power of this side of the tree comes from the tier twos. Um, so we have Parting Gift which changes the one meter push to a 10 meter push. This is a huge increase to the push. Watch, watch this, watch like how far he's going now. And it, it is just a push. So it's not, it's not hard CC, but just the sheer change of the distance there is, is insane to me. Like just the, the distance that he gets pushed. And then just the same exact thing. And, you know, the, this is really a huge get off me button. Because if anyone's diving at you, they are no longer next to you after you use that. Even if you, you know, even if you land right where you started, they're going to be pretty far away from you after that, after this upgrade. But I think the more impactful upgrade here is make it rain fire. So after you use detonate, your fireballs start at the tier two charge. For three seconds the next three seconds every single fireball you throw will start at tier two so this really this is one of the um this is one of the situations where it actually ties back into your lmb and it's you know th there are upgrades throughout the hero roster here and there that really change like one ability will highly impact a different ability but this is this is one of those a uh, few situations and and it's really cool so you know if i normally use q I'm still starting at tier one with all those up with all those uh, fireballs, but then I'm going to do make it rain fire. And then, the, you know, you can you can consider the fact that a lot of these will like this. This starts really well with burn notice because all of these will do uh, all these will apply burning and do that extra damage because it's a bigger a bigger fire. But you see, and it's not it's not even just while you're skyborne like or, or sorry, airborne like it's. You can launch about four, maybe even five of those fireballs, and they're all going to be second tier. It's just, it's, it's so good. Make it rain fire is probably one of his best upgrades, and I, I really love it. On the other side of this upgrade tree, we have dive bomb starting at tier one. You can now, uh, basically hit Q again, and you will dive down to the targeted space. On landing, you'll do a bit of damage and then also apply burning to enemies within three meters. The burning is 100 damage per second for three seconds. And that's actually a significant burn. Like, it's about the same damage as his E. So this is just actually, this actually makes this ability kind of only for defensive and fleeing and repositioning and kind of gives you this extra source of damage. Uh, like, a bit of, a bit of burst, especially if you do it point blank, like combo directly where you're standing like like if someone melee dives you and you just detonate and then dive bomb right on them you're doing close to 300 damage and then also burning them for a hundred more extra damage so it the the full thing does around 600 damage of course a little bit less after considering you know armor but this is a this also gives you a different mobility option because instead of you know just having the q to launch upward you can now kind of propel yourself forward. And, you know, it 
it, it's it's got this really neat flexibility of of being able to you know be used both offensively and defensively kind of changes the potential of of the spell as a whole and and it's it's pretty neat I, I i do like this i just think the left path is a little better the make it rain fire but you know it's it's all at the personal preference uh but tier twos time of impact per hit reduces the cooldown by three seconds but to a minimum of three seconds so it's always going to have a three it's, it's always going to have a three second cooldown uh even if you hit as many as possible uh but basically normally 12 second cooldown and then you can re reduce it by three seconds pretty pretty easy to understand and i'll show that really quick you know i and it, it also is specifically the dive bomb portion it's not it's not detonate because if you if you just hit with detonate and you don't any hit anybody with dive bomb you don't get the cooldown reduction but you saw there i hit with the dive bomb it went down to nine seconds and i'm going to do it this way it stays at 12 seconds so you're you're really committing to actually using it offensively if you use that and same goes with the other side but we'll get into that um but yeah this this limits the this limits the potential of your damage output uh kind of, or, or sorry it, it increases your damage output but it makes you a much more susceptible target because you're committing your basic is you're committing your only escape to doing more damage which is fine but you, you have to keep in mind like what the enemy has and and if they have the ability to jump on you and you don't have anything you're basically a sitting duck but on, anyway to the other side of the tier twos here uh super heat increases the burn damage uh but also increases the cooldown so it becomes a 15 second cooldown but the uh the burn turns into a major burn and uh, the damage is actually increased to 130 instead of 100. So this is a this is interesting because I, I've I've tested this so many times and I really can't come to a reasonable conclusion. I am very positive that because it says major burn specifically in the upgrade, it's actually technically coded as a different debuff, which means that major burn will stack at full up uh, at full damage like it, it'll stack at full potency with other burns but it seems as though the caveat is that you have to use this burn first i i, I don't know why that's the case but i've i've tried it with hot hail i've tried it with the uh tier one upgrade here burn notice like this it seems as though you specifically have to apply the major burn first and then that major burn will stay at full potency because the other the others are just burn you know, all these just say burn. That says just burn. Even like even here, that just says burn. Superheat seems to work at full power if you apply it first. And and the reason I bring this up is because in case you don't know, I I did bring this up. I think in the status effects video, or maybe I said it in um, I think I said it in a tier list talking about Taito. But basically, if you apply the same degen it does not matter if it's from a different source if you apply the same degen the most powerful degen will be the one that is doing the initial damage and then every consecutive degen will be at 10 percent potency so if this wasn't made if if these were just burns this one does 130 and then hot hill does 110 it's not 240 damage it's actually it would be um it would be 130 and then 10% of, of 110 is 11, which means it would do 130, sorry, 141 damage per second. And it does not matter how many burns you apply. The one that does the most damage will be the damage done. And then everything after is only at 10%. So this, this is why, this is why it's important to note that this says major burn. But again, the caveat, I, I, I don't, it's probably a bug of some kind. But it seems as though you have to apply the major burn first for it to stay at the full damage. And it's it's really weird. But it just, you know, I can, I can show this super quick. It's it's exactly the same as the tier one. It just does more damage. But so you land and that burn is just doing more damage. It's yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's a it's a it's a it's a nice buff to damage and it, it's it's just got a weird interaction with other burns because it specifically says major burn so it, it's supposed to be different I, I i'm not fully aware of why it works that way but it does i was ranting so much i didn't even uh i didn't even think to prove it so watch i'm gonna do i'm gonna do hot hail first and then do the 
a super heat dive bomb. So that damage total, 650. But watch, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the dive bomb first and then do hot hail and, and look at the damage difference. It's it's so peculiar and, and I don't know why it does this, but this is apparently how it works. So watch, I'm gonna dive and then throw this down. See? 882. What a huge difference. <laughs> like, right? I I I don't know why it would matter why it, i don't know why it matters if you do q first and then a different source of burn but that that is apparently how it works it's so weird anyway all weirdness aside we're going to finally move on to the e upgrades uh starting on the left here with hot coals uh enemies in the space are now slowed by 25 percent uh for three seconds so basically if they're in the space they are slowed and even after they leave the space the slow will linger so uh, normally it's just a burn, but now in the space it says burn and slow. Simple. Really, really simple, low cost upgrade. And it's it's uh, it's pretty good. I think this is generally like the go-to for most people, because it just gives you a little extra CC that Charnock doesn't actually have. So it's it's good for yourself and it's good for the team just to have a bit of a slow. Tier 2 on the left side is called Burn, uh, Burn a Nation. Increases the radius from 3 to 4.5. And this is actually... I, I, I feel like the number isn't right here, but this is a huge increase. So look, that's the normal radius. Pretty nice, pretty big. Kind of kind of fills the space pretty well. But I'm going to pick up the ability and, and look at this. Look how big that increase is! <laughs> This is a huge space that also slows, remember, because it's tier two. Like oh my god. What a what an amazing upgrade. Like just the the sheer size and, and of course the fact that it, you know, does 110 damage per second as well is pretty significant. So that's what a what a good upgrade. And then the other side, if you're you know I, I don't think there's ever a reason to ever get this, but it is it, it is there if you want it. Um you're you're getting rid of the increased size for basically a stronger slow. So the slow is 25 normally, and this one is 50, which is pretty big. Like, admittedly, that is a huge reduction in movement speed. But I think that there's so much other CC in the game that you're really not worried about it. But it, it, it is there, just in case. But I, I think generally there are way better sources of, of slows. <laughs> and of course, like hit reactions like stuns and stuff. So worth worth mentioning, but I think the other, I think Burdenation is just... So good. Now on to the right side. First tier one is called Hunk of Burning Love. After a delay of two seconds, a meteor will drop that deals 375 damage. Now that is a that is a big enticing damage number, but the delay is so long. Watch this. It's a small space. You bring it down. Look how long that took. It's like the enemy has to stay in that space for that to work. It, it is like the damage is really big. I, I, I won't deny that the damage is, is actually huge, but the delay is so long that it's really not worth it, in my opinion, compared to the uh, the slowing effect and the increased radius size. And, you know, I'm going to get to this tier two eventually. But, you know, I, I, I just if you have like a team that has so much lockdown and it's just a it's just a series of stacking together crowd control like maybe but yeah I, yeah I, a lot of people look at that number and just be like ooh, and then it's it's really not good uh but the tier two here on the left is crater uh the meteor now stuns for 0.9 seconds basically one second stun when it lands so Exact same thing, exact same delay, but now it stuns. That's it. Very simple. And then the other side, you know, uh, again, this super enticing 375 damage no longer has a delay. And there's there's still a little bit of a delay. I, I just, it says there's no delay before it falls, but there's so much time to get out of that space before it actually lands. Like genuinely, this is this looks like such a good upgrade. And, and if if you've got a Margrave on your team, you know, maybe. 
but I don't know. I, I think there's I think there's much more benefits to the other side of the tree. But if you if you really want to get the meteor, by all means, like I'm not going to stop you. I just think the other side's better. And a lot of other people agree. And finally, we have the focus upgrades. Starting on the left, we have Dominator. On kill, Fireball gains 5% increased damage until death. Stacks up to three times. So with three kills, you get 15% increased damage on your left mouse button until you die. It's 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 actually a, a pretty nice uh, damage bonus. I think the only problem with this side of the tree is that the tier twos are kind of meh. Uh, and then they're both of the ones on this side are really good. But before we even get to this, yeah, very, very basic um, damage bonus just on your fireballs. It's it's pretty substantial if you get to that three stack. But it is important to know that it is kills like you have to land the killing blow. Uh, it's not assist. It's not, you know, uh, it's not cliffing because, well, actually, it might cliffing might work. Like if you've got the if you've got the push, uh, <laughs> if you've got the push on on your Q, um, that might count. But I I don't I don't actually know. That's a good question. Does cliffing count as your kills? I think it might actually. But anyway, if you get three point is if you get three kills, you get a fifteen percent damage buff uh, until you die. So you're 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 risking like the increased flat fifteen percent damage on your LMBs uh, if you're doing super well. But if you die, you, you have to build that thing. You have to build the boost up again. It's it's nice. It's it works. It's it's just, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of prerequisites and Charnock is he's not like super easy to kill, but he he is easier to kill than others. Uh, he's he's easier to kill than you might think. Anyway, tier two on the left side, uh, Battle Fury on kill and death gain 25 flat focus. And again, this is on kills specifically. It's not assists. You have to get a kill, you get 25 focus. It's pretty nice. Um, but you do have to remember that a focus bar is 300, according to the math of a lot of other people that are way smarter than me. Um, so to to basically get the focus with this, like you have to get a lot of kills or die a lot of times. Um, and of course, you're generating focus by other means because all of your damage is also generating focus and, and every every instance of of you know, dealing damage and some in some cases even taking damage um, and, and other factors like deflecting things. If you got the uh, if you got the right mouse button upgrade that deflects, like even that can generate focus. Point is, th this can add up over time. Uh, I just think it's, you know, it's I, I think there are better things. Uh, and then the other one, remorseless on a kill, gain 10 percent movement speed and 10 percent damage for six seconds. And this would stack with the tier one. So uh if you do get a kill and you already have three kills, it actually is a 25% damage increase, which is pretty substantial, especially on your left mouse button, uh, which is going to be the a big amount of your damage because uh, if you don't have any of cooldowns, of course. And it, it, it is important to know that if you... Um, this would work for all three tiers if you went the three tier path on the LMB, but it would not increase the burning damage because the burning degen is very specifically like that amount of damage. It does not increase the damage of that. It's only the fireball itself. So getting remorseless, getting that, uh, getting this kill with the 10% and then three from the tier, uh, three kills for 15% on the tier one would not increase this 40% damage uh, every second. Important to know. But yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll show uh, that real quick. Just kind of really quickly get a kill here. As I, as I throw my E behind him like a doofus. Look at me. Look at me teaching people and doing things the wrong way. Anyway. We all make mistakes, guys. I'm just here to tell you how things work. I never claim to be good at the game. But anyway, you saw I get the damage boost there with the floating text. My hands are glowing. And then uh, this won't technically go away because I'm getting that damage boost from the tier 1. But the, the damage will be... The damage will be reduced after a couple seconds and it's it's more noticeable with the movement speed buff because you're not you know with the movement speed you got that little bit of a vapor trail effect around you with the wind kind of passing you'll you'll notice that you're losing the damage there uh with that but that's that's how that works on to the other side of the focus tree we have blazing fast at tier one reduces the fireball charge time 2.5 seconds so i 
I don't actually know what the normal charge time is. It might be 0.6, might be 0.7, but basically you just charge your fireball a little bit faster. And you, you, you really won't notice immediately. Like it's, it's a little hard to tell because these are, these are uncharged. And you know, there, there, are, there are people that play Charnock more often. They have this timing, like the very millisecond that it reaches full, they will let go and it'll be full. Uh, but blazing fast, like there, there's, there's a little bit of a notice there. I, I think, I think over the course of the match, like you'll notice that you're definitely throwing fire faster. But overall, like the the dip here is the dip here on its own is is okay. I think the bigger thing are these tier twos. So uh, on the left side, tier two, we have penetrating flame, fireballs, charge shots, deal armor, ignoring damage. Thirty percent of the target's armor is completely ignored with charged hits. So all tier twos, and if you went the if you went the bigger ball fire uh, left side path, where three tiers. Um, that would also ignore armor, but it's important on that side that the tier twos and tier threes will uh, will uh, ignore the 30 percent armor, not just tier threes. So you're not limiting yourself that way. Uh, it doesn't say fully charged shots. It just says charge shots. So tier two is considered a charge shot, even though you have three tiers. Just remember that. But anyway, uh, show damage without it. 191. And then hopefully I didn't build enough crit doing that, but we'll see. And then 201. And, you know, on on Gnosis, it's not a super noticeable thing. But when you're in a game with possibly a lot of really tanky folks, if they have supports that can give armor, if they can give themselves armor, like or, you know, you have a heavily armored person like HK or Margrave, like you're going to notice that increase over the course of the fight, because if all of your shots are landing and you're doing at least a tier two with every single one that that's going to add up very quickly. But the other side here is precision flame fireball charge shots always crit. So it does not matter where your crit rate currently is. If it is a charge shot, it's going to crit no matter what that is. That is the truth of it. So critical hit. Critical hit, critical hit. You know, it's it's a pretty a pretty simple to understand ability uh, upgrade. Now, it's really good, but I think and this is my honest opinion. I think by the time that you actually get this upgrade, you're gonna have so many other sources of damage and be in combat for so long that you're just gonna ramp up your crit, all, no matter what. Like your, your, your critical hit is eventually going to reach a hundred percent just being in combat for more than three seconds. So if you, if you really want to get this, you can, I think it's much better to get penetrating flame. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly do another critical hit, uh, quick lesson. I think I did this in Beckett and I probably did this in a tier list video too. Critically hit starts at a very low percent. And the longer that you remain in combat, so long as you're doing damage to somebody, you're building your critical hit rate. And once that critical hit reaches 100%, you're always going to crit. That, that's that's how critical hit work. And there's little nuances because for some reason, if you keep attacking the same person, you'll never critical hit. You have to have like a small delay of not doing anything or switching targets, and then you're going to always crit. And I, I really don't understand how that works, but that's how it works. And that's how it's always worked. And it's really weird. But just remember, so long as you're doing damage, you're going to reach critical hit 100% every single time. So I, I don't think that this is super necessary. Um, maybe if you went big ball of fire. And then you wanted to get this and just you have the full charge, always crit damage. And that's that is going to do a lot. But it just, you know, it there, there's I think ignoring armor is a lot better, especially when there are a lot of people that can give themselves armor and, and armor is really strong in the game. It always has been. So anything that gives you armor pen is going to be way better. That is it for the uh, upgrades 
in the abilities. Now we're going to go over the talents. So remember, talents unlock at level five. It's basically a third upgrade to one of your three uh, abilities. Starting here with Burning Breath, which is the right mouse button upgrade. Dragon Breath now applies a burn for four seconds, deals 25 damage per second. And then on Clash or during Clash, that burn increases uh, an additional 25. So changes from 25 to 50 damage. And then let's really quick. You'll see as I go over here, the right mouse button now applies a burn. It's a pretty nice little extra damage boost. You know, if if you want to if you want to go the kind of full everything burn like this is pretty solid. Um, this is a good upgrade for I, I think it's a good talent for people that are learning Charnock. I think the I think there's one that really stands out in the long run. Uh, but this one is this one's OK. The middle one here is propulsion, which is the Q upgrade. Uh, increases detonates jump distance to 3.5 and then the landing hit range so um this <laughs> this is effectively only useful if you go the dive bomb or like like the the half of it is only useful if you go the dive bomb uh because if you're just you don't do any damage on just landing like with the normal detonate but if you do the dive bomb and it just increases the radius of the effective hit radius it's 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 a little bit weird um and i think it also increases the distance you can use the second part of a uh, of of dive bomb but basically the basically the normal jump is that high and then if you hit propulsion it uh it increases that distance it's it's not like a huge distance bonus but it is it is you know if, if you really need to get higher in the air or to a higher ledge, like it does propel you a bit faster, a bit higher. You, you do go further. So that it's 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 really good if you're um, it's it's really good if you see yourself like very often getting jumped. Like if there's a lot of melee, or a lot of assassins that are coming after you like this is really good to have. But I think generally the Q, uh, the Q here that just pushes enemies super far away. I think that's better overall. Uh, but that's also a commitment to the Q upgrade. So if you do want to go dive bomb and you're still, you know, using this or still wanting to use this, like that's also OK. Uh, also, I didn't even mention this on Clash. Uh, when you land, you get a movement speed buff, a 12 percent movement speed buff for 12 uh, for three seconds, not 12 seconds. Jesus, can you imagine a movement speed buff that lasts for 12 seconds? Oh, my God. Anyway, finally, we have Hail Yes, which is the E upgrade. Uh, increases the casting range of hot hail by eight meters and then on a kill with a burn you gain 50 focus now this is the, uh, during clash i should say uh now i think the clash talent is i think i think both parts of this talent is like really really impactful because a lot of the abilities that you're going to get will apply like a lot of the upgrades that you're going to get for the most optimal charnock builds are going to be the ones that apply burning like e e always applies burning and your focus always applies burning but like burn notice is the burn notice is the best lmb upgrade like you can sit on burn notice for a while and you'll be fine so the fact that you have so many sources of burning, you're going to get an extra 50 focus, which is a, like a six, like maybe even of maybe even a quarter of a charge for your focus bar just for killing someone that is burning. It, it's it's crazy how fast you can start generating focus. Uh, but more importantly, the increase of the cast range. Look, this this can already cast really far. Like I, I'm all the way over here and I can hit that Motiga. But watch, watch if I watch after I get this, the, the, it's insane how far this increases the cast range. See those, see those target dummies over there. I can hit them. Look at that. Look at that. Look how far away I am. And I can, I can hit that guy. It just, I, I, I love this upgrade. This is the go-to upgrade that everyone that really like, that, that really like, got into Charnock and really focused on using him, this is the go-to. It's just both benefits are super impactful immediately. And it's, you know, there there are a lot of upgrades across the roster with the Clash talent where the, the talent alone is okay. And then it, it's either the talent is okay and then the Clash talent is great or vice versa where the initial talent is amazing and then the Clash talent is like, eh, it's okay, it's nice. Like this is this is one of the few where both are super good. 
It just, uh, I really can only think of a couple off the top of my head. Like, Gnosis has a really good one like that. Um, like, Imani has one that's okay. Uh, HK has one okay. The point is, like, this is really good. The, the, if when you when you get like really into uh, Charnock and you and you're fully like committing to learning him and maybe even maining him or using him as a secondary or tertiary like this this should be your default go to upgrade. Sorry, I got a little heated there. Uh, no pun intended, because one of the best players I know is a Charnock main or he was a Charnock main back in the heyday, and I, I have to do him justice because a lot of people sleep on Charnock for some reason and he just does so much damage and and like i i really feel like i need to emphasize how good he actually is in the right hands he's he does definitely have a learning curve but once you get him like he is he's so solid but anyway let's get into the actual builds that i want to go over so this first build i'm gonna just call like probably the most optimal build i mean <laughs> it, it seems it seems weird to say that but generally like this is the most easy to use most understandable easiest to digest and just the best all-round charnock build you're, you're you're able to do everything that you need to very easily and it's also like somewhat flexible so it's it's very easy to kind of understand but basically you're going to start with your LMB and get burn notice. This is a, a huge, like, single a, a single point damage increase because you're giving a burn. I, I said this about when I when I gave you that one Beckett build that does the uh, the upgrade on her Q that does the burning. It's the same exact, like, concept. Just this is a, an immediate increase to your damage. Because so long as you're hitting a charged shot, which you really should, you're doing an extra 120 damage over the course of three seconds. And it's, it's super easy to apply because the second shot, the, the second shot, you know, is it ramps up pretty quickly. And the, the, the projectile is very forgiving because it's large and it explodes. And you remember, you do have to hit directly. So that that's going to be something that you have to learn over the course of playing this build. But once you get it, like you will notice immediately the difference of the amount of damage that you do. Then from there, you're going to play more supportive with the team and get hot coals. And then you're going to get level three is burn a nation. This, this alone is such a huge zone control bo uh, boon because the early game skirmishes when everyone's sitting at level three and most players are going to sit at level three for like all the way through maybe the first rampage of the game, unless a lot of things happen like all at once. Like if you... If you collect a lot of power and, and kill a lot of people, like, yeah, you're going to get higher levels. But generally through most of the clash mode, you're going to sit at level three for like the first five minutes of the game. And it's 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 weird to say that because you don't think about it until you're actually in the game and you realize, oh, yeah, we're at a low level for quite a while. This this these two upgrades alone give you a huge zoning potential, huge area of effect potential, just all of that damage to a lot of people and this this makes up for even on maps where charnak kind of struggles at which are ones that are more kind of open concept because his aoe is very limited to very specific spaces but this compensates that kind of i wouldn't even call it a flaw it just kind of makes those certain uh, areas better and it makes those areas better and it also enhances the ability of cutting off choke points like the entrance onto d point on sirens the ramps on ghost reef the you know the middle platforms uh, on on um sanctum falls like there there are so many spots i can think of where just having a huge increased radius of a an aoe that does <laughs> that does 110 damage per second it's i i man what what a what is very simple to understand investment right so from here you're now level four this is where you can start flexing a bit there are upgrades in all three i think there are upgrades in all four remaining trees that can be useful here i think the problem though is that for the focus and the q it's going to be a double dip like you, you kind of have to dedicate a double dip to get that full uh effect 
I think the safest thing to do personally is to get fire shelter at level four. Fire shelter gives you that deflection and damage reduction. This helps with your defenses. This helps with, you know, helping the team in deflecting incoming projectiles. Because remember, the game, the game meta right now is having at least two shooters on both teams. So if anything that counteracts that is like a huge benefit, especially if you can grab it early. Because this this does not like at all reduce his possible damage. Like you're 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 postponing your like super damage potential by a little bit. But I would say it's probably the safest here because this helps again with your survivability and deflecting. And then also if people jump on you, you can use this to like mitigate damage but still remain in the fight, and then you're doing damage in return. Because, you know, I did all that damn like you know, if imagine if I was getting attacked by two people, I'm doing all that damage and backing up at the same time. So long as I'm not getting interrupted and I'm taking 20% less damage from anything that is attacking me. And then also, I also like any projectiles that come my way are just going to go. And it's, it's possible that those projectiles also get knocked into those that are assaulting me. Like this is a very, I said it earlier, this is a very low investment upgrade. This one, this tier one. And it gives you so many benefits. Um, I would say, I, I would you like you can uh, postpone this. Like I said earlier, I would not get it past level six. Like at most, you 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 know this this build gives it at level four. I would say level five is pushing it, and then level six like definitely do not get it past level six because it's 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 already too late at that point. Uh, unless you like, unless you really are just not getting attacked at all. That would be the only situation, but that's probably not going to be the case because very smart players are going to realize that Charnock is always constantly a problem and always doing damage, and they're going to jump on him uh, any chance that they can. So that's level four. At level five, I think the best damage potential, if you're doing well, I would say you could double dip into Q. If you're on even ground or struggling a little bit against the enemy team, I think you could actually go into your LMB and get Stoke the Fire. Because this is this is going to be some nice extra damage when you're hitting people with that are in your E and hitting people that are already burning from your LMB from Tier 2s. So you could get this at level 5 very easily. Um, but if you're super ahead, like if you're, if you're just performing really, really well, I think the best way to stay on top of the game is to get Blast Off and then make it rain fire at level five and six. And then of course you're gonna get a uh, hail yes because I, I I just, I already had the rant. You guys know why hail yes is the best upgrade. Um, but essentially what this does is that you're now, you're now doing super powerful burning damage attacks that are always tier two shots. So they're like really quick, burn like I'm, I'm gonna do I'm going to do a little bit of a showcase here. Like the ideal here is if you get jumped or even if you don't get jumped, but it, it, in in the situation where you get jumped, you want to throw down your E Q right away. And then just start throwing your LMBs like as you're retreating. That was so much damage and it took almost nothing. It, it took, it took almost no effort whatsoever aside from like aiming my LMB. <laughs> And you could you could do that so frequently because even I mean, even if you don't get jumped, you don't necessarily even need to use the Q. And 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 granted, if you do use the Q offensively like this, you know, there there's a higher risk of being jumped and, and destroyed. But if you're in a really safe spot, like in a in a if you're in the back of the line of your team. And then you're just, you know, if, you, if you're in the back of your team and your your team is playing properly like a front to back. I can cast this from so far away and then, well, I missed there, but you know, if imagine I had hit that and you're just, you're just raining so much damage. You're applying massive amounts of burst in large areas of effect for free and you're, you're only level six at this point, you know, cause it, this is by the time that you're probably about to get into clash. So you're, you're going to be very quickly getting the extra benefit of getting extra focus because there's so many sources of burning already happening there. And then from there, I would say level seven, you're going to get stoked the fire. 
you're just doing more flat damage. Like that's that's all it's about, right? You're just doing more flat damage. I would say you can you can probably postpone the two Qs and get this early. Like it's okay to get this. It's it could go either way, but I think you can uh, I think you can save this for a little bit later if you're doing really well and get these two upgrades first. But that is level seven, uh, and then. At level eight, if you if you reach this far in the game, because remember, it's it's not very common to reach level eight or higher in a, in a game that's uh, unless it's like both sides are doing really well and it's just very obviously like a very even fight on both sides. Uh, but if you do reach level eight, uh, you're you're going to get blazing fast for those uh, increased uh, casting speed, and then also your penetrating flame for armor piercing. Uh, I. I think you could get these a little earlier if you really wanted to, but I don't think you should get them earlier than the double uh, kind of make it rain, uh, the the increase detonate damage and then into make it rain fire. And you you have to fully, I, I, I want to reiterate, you have to fully commit to the queue because the tier one upgrade on this side of the tree is not really that impactful. Like it's good for that extra burst of damage if you get jumped, but for the most part, like you want to double dip because you want to just start throwing your fireballs as quickly as possible so that's why you want to that's why you want to get both like right away and then at level 10 um you really could get either one i think generally you're going to get backdraft more often because you if again if you get jumped late in the game and everyone has all their upgrades you're much more susceptible because everyone has all the tools that they need so you want to get the backdraft to push them away that is the that is the super like death from above probably arguably the best build that charnock has it just <laughs> it seems it seems so conceited to say that but like really the, the, there's not there's not a, like there are a lot of upgrades for charnock that are really just not good so there's not really any reason to consider flexing that much even with the second build that i'm going to go over in a minute um it doesn't even alter really that much it just kind of changes the way you approach playing charnock but uh that's the first build a quick recap, the too long didn't watch uh, tier, uh, sorry, build one, upgrade path, level one, burn notice, level two, hot coals, level three, burn a nation, level four, fire shelter. And this is fire shelter you can get a little bit later if you want to, but uh, generally probably level four is the safest. Level five is blast off and make it rain fire. And also at level five, you'll pick up hail. Yes. Level six is uh stoke the fire and then level seven is blazing fast or sorry level eight is blazing fast level nine is penetrating flame and level 10 you'll get either one but generally more often you're probably going to get backdraft and that's the build now for build number two uh it took me a little while to kind of fully decide what i wanted to call this build i'm basically going to call it the burn forever build uh and essentially this this uh this build plays one specific way and it's just going all in and melting someone as quickly as possible um and it's it's not really like an assassin thing it's kind of just every single upgrade every single ability that you're going to get is going to apply burning in some way shape or form so you're using these abilities like one after another very strategically to make sure that the enemy dies and it, it does do a lot of area of effect too so it's kind of the aoe burn everything build and ironically it'll start exactly the same you're gonna get burn notice at level one and you're gonna get hot coals and burn a nation at level two and three it just i the these these three upgrades are the bread and butter of charnock no matter what no matter what upgrade path you end up taking whatever build you find most optimally i swear all of your builds are probably going to get those three uh, abilities first but anyway, at level four, we're going to get dive bomb and then we're going to get super heat. Now, I showed I showed this earlier when you get the super heat. You're initially with this build. This is this is kind of all that you really need. Oh, and then also you're going to get uh, burning breath at level five. Um, you can you can still get hail. Yes, with this. I think hail. Yes, is generally better, but you can substitute burning breath and it does work for this build um, because it's all about just weaving the different burns and. Um, but both of the, both of them work. Just important to know. Um, but what I, what I showed earlier, remember when I when I showed how super heat worked in tandem with hot hail. Basically, with this build, you want to you want to get jumped. <laughs> like 
you don't want to position poorly, obviously, but like in the situation where you get jumped, you realize that you're effectively going to just turn and immediately burn anyone and anything that is right next to you. And the way that you do that is you queue and then queue back down immediately. Wherever, however many people you land on, if you get two, if you get three, even better. But if you get at least one, like you're doing what you need to do. Then right away, you're going to cast Hot Hail and then you're going to start Dragon Breathing. And the reason uh, the reason that's important is because at this point, level five, you are postponing Fire Shelter for the sake of doing more damage. So this is something to keep in mind. It's it's a little less flexible. Like I said, the other build was more flexible because you want to get Fire Shelter earlier. You're, you're still going to get Fire Shelter because this is still the best way to to mitigate damage, especially if you're going to be hard all inning on dealing damage and not using your Q to escape. So you want to get fire shelter at level six. Then from there, it's really it's really up for grabs. Um, I think the best thing after this is still going to get stoke the fire and that's level seven. Uh, and then from there, you could actually argue going the left side path. But this uh, this is something that you kind of have to be mindful of, because, again, if you're fully committing your Q to doing more damage, you are going to be more susceptible more to the possibility of death. But with this build, you are generally trying to just go all in and do as much damage as possible before just getting annihilated. Like this is the this is the kamikaze build. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but that's basically what it is. Um, so at level eight, you can get Dominator and level nine, you can get Remorseless. And, you know, the, the reason you get this is that if you do survive, you're doing extra damage and you're a little bit more mobile. 10% movement speed is not like a lot, but it is something, you know, in, in case the enemies start turning on you, you do have a little extra movement if you want to get away. And with with this build, I want to also say you really want to work in tandem with a frontliner. So someone like Paco or Margrave works really super well with this build because they can keep people locked down in this area, uh, area of effect space. But Remorseless is level nine and level 10. You're not going to get backdraft. You, like you, you can get backdraft if you really, really want to, but you probably want to get firewall because you want to reduce all as much damage as possible. Again, if you're fully committing your, your one and only escape, with your squishy with your squishy mage body you want to get as much damage reduction as possible so this will be level 10 and you know if if you want to get firewall a little bit earlier if you want to if you want to not get you know these two upgrades you can also get this before you uh, dip fully into the focus upgrades but this is level 10 so again this is this this thing is all about waiting until you get jumped or if you like flank, you you probably really don't want to flank as Charnock, but it is an option. But in the situation where you get jumped, or you can join a frontliner like very quickly charge in with a frontliner that is keeping people locked down, this is what you want to do. You want to run in with your frontliner. Let's say Margrave pretending. We'll, we'll pretend Margrave's here. He jumps in and stuns everybody. And then maybe he'll focus everyone after. But right after he lands in, you want to be right behind him. And then you want to Q, land immediately, and then drop your hot hail. And then from there, you can start doing your LMBs because everyone's burning. You're doing more. And then after those two effects, after those two effects end, like the two burnings from the Q and the E end, then you want to do your then you want to do your burning there. And if enemies are still not alive, you still have your LMB doing extra enhanced damage because you've got stoke the fire and that's that's basically the build so again it's it's either build no matter what it's all about doing a lot of damage like really quickly i just think the other build is more optimal and it's more flexible and it's generally just a little bit better and it's um it's a little less <laughs> it's a little less crazy but both builds do work um i just think the other build's better but this this is a this is a very passable build that does work. Here's the TLDR of build number two. Level one is going to be burn notice. Level two, hot coals. Level three, burn a nation, just like the first build. But now level four is going to be dive bomb. Level five is superheated. Level six, you can get fire shelter, or you can wait until level seven. But I think level six is a little bit better. And then level seven, you're going to get stoke the fire. 
You can get Fireball at level 8. It's okay either way. But level 8, for this build's sake, is going to be Dominator. Level 9 is Remorseless. And level 10 is Fireball. With, of course, the Clash Talent being either Burning Breath or Hail Yes. Burning Breath works a little bit better for the build specifically. But both are fine. But we'll get Burning Breath for this one. All right, so that is the deep dive for Charnock. Uh, for everyone that watched all the way through, I appreciate you very much. Uh, I know that these videos are long and it's a lot of me rambling and talking and explaining things, but these videos do take a lot of time because there's a lot to explain. And then I do have to give my reasons for why I make these builds and why I, I do certain upgrades in certain orders. So I appreciate you all being here. Make sure you like the video if you learned something. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed watching. Uh, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, and just a really quick disclaimer, as I do, as I've done with the other videos so far, this is not me saying that these are the best builds. These are not me saying do these builds or you're not going to perform well. This is just optimal builds. What I think is the best way to play this character, especially if you're a new player. Um, but again, if you find a build that works for you, please, by all means, do it. If, if you, if you've got the ability to play Charnak and you perform super super well with that build whatever you're doing by all means please keep doing it i, I will not tell you otherwise but i uh, thank you again for watching have a good day i will see you guys in the next one